Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to our video, and today I'm going to be doing a setup and configuration tutorial for Betaflight 3.2.3, which is the newest version right now, with my new AUX FPV Acrolyte 230, which I just built, which will be my new freestyle quad. So I'll be doing this um, initial setup video on the computer, and then I will also be doing a tuning video on this, because my other tuning videos are kind of outdated now, because they used um, quite older versions of Betaflight, so a lot has changed, so let's go over that. But first, before we start, of course, get these props removed. You do not want anything spinning up. And this particular build in, in particular here, um, the motors, the ESCs, since they're not really calibrated correctly, and they just have um, the random stock values, um, they actually do spin up sporadically, um, real slow when I plug in a battery. So it's very important to make sure you have your props off. Alright, so let's go into the firmware flasher because we need to update this board. This is the Betaflight F4 board in there. So we're just going to find here and go to the Betaflight F4 right there. We're going to choose the newest, which is 3.2.3, .3. and when we plug in the USB, we need to make sure that we get the um, boot button pressed. i got to find where it is here. Okay, so I got the bind button pressed. I'm going to plug in the play controller. Careful not to short anything. And you should see on Betaflight that it comes up in DFU. Obviously, it is easier to flash this before you plug anything in, and it is nice to see, hopefully, the um, receiver is also powered by the flight controller here, so that's going to be nice when we're setting that up. We don't have to plug in a battery there. So we're just going to hit the load firmware online. Okay, it's just going to take a few seconds to download there, and then you can hit flash firmware. Okay, so that was first, it was just erasing the configuration already on the board, and now it's going through flashing, and depending on the uh, baud rate settings that you have here, um, it might go faster or slower, but just let it finish out the process here. And there we go, so it's rebooting the board, and now it is, um, you can see up here, it just took it out of DFU, so it's ready to go, so we can hit connect, and we should be in everything good so first I'm just going to verify that I put the board in right so if I tilt it forwards you can see everything's good and lined up correctly if you put the arrow on the board forward you'll be fine there so you can calibrate the accelerometer if you want I turn it off so it doesn't matter but that's whatever so next for ports I think I soldered the uh, receiver on UART 6 so it's it's already on here so I think that's where I soldered it so I'm just going to leave that for now um, for the um, configuration tab, I'm going to turn motor direction as reverse because that's how I like to run them, which means instead of the props spinning this way, in towards the middle, in towards the back, I spin them the other way so it's outwards. Um, it just keeps your camera clean and it doesn't really handle any different. I just like to do that. Um, for the ESCs, I'm going to select D-Shot 1200 because these are 32-bit um, ESCs here. And for the motor idle, I'm just going to set to 3 right now. Seems to work fine for me. We don't need to change any of the alignment because it was the um, picture and the configuration was all fine. I'm going to go to 8K, 8K, turn the barometer off. It's an F4 board. We'll have plenty of power for that. I'll put in the Acrolyte 230 as the name right here. I'm going to leave everything else off. The S bus is already set up here. You just want serial receiver. And S bus if you're using um, Free Sky, otherwise you can use Spectrum or whatever else you have here. And then I'm going to turn off telemetry. I don't use that. I don't use anything else here. However, I do want Air Mode to be on here. I just like to permanently enable it. You want OSD to be on, as well as I'm going to turn on the ESC sensor, which is for the BL Heli 32 bit um, telemetry data there. I'm going to turn on anti gravity. And I'm also going to turn on dynamic filter. And all these settings here are just for a beeper, but I don't have one, so it doesn't matter. You can leave those all like that. But that's what I do in the configuration tab, and make sure you hit save and reboot. Okay, so we can connect back in here, and we can go to power and battery. So if I take a battery here, I'm just going to check the voltage on this guy just so we um, have a reference here. 
it's saying 15.38 volts here on this meter. It's a decently accurate meter, so we can plug this guy in. Make sure your props are off. And then it is saying no volts. So it has voltage meter source as none, so I'm just going to put on board and as well as the current meter source I'm going to put on board and I'm going to hit save here. Okay, there we go. So after I had saved, I just had to go and reboot the board as well. And now you can see up here we have 15.5 volts and it's showing everything there. However, if I do check this, let me just check it again while we're plugged in. This is reading 15.33 volts now. So I'm actually going to have to adjust the scale a little bit. <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure how the scale is adjusted, however, I'm just going to drop this down, let's just say 1, and now we have 15.3, so I'm going to just leave it like that. And then you can see over here the current is saying we're pulling 0.2 amps right now. Again, you'd have to um, calibrate that further if you want more accuracy. So next, I'm going to just unplug the battery, we don't really need it right now. And we're going to move into failsafe. I just like to turn on stage 2 and set this to 5 there, and save and reboot, nothing special, connect back again. For the PID tuning, I'm just going to leave the PID stock here, however I am going to input my rates. Um, for those of you that are interested, these are my rates right here. Let's see, it's 952, actually yeah, I go 0.8 on these. Otherwise, that looks perfectly fine there. I'm going to turn the anti-gravity gain. I just, you can adjust this value depending on how you tune. However, I don't really find any adverse effects, so I just go ahead and set that to 6 right off the bat, as well as increase the TPA to 15. And then I go over to the filter settings and turn off the first two notches since we turned on the dynamic filter. And this is something that you really should um, test while you're flying and do one at a time to make sure you're not getting hot motors. However, this is a soft mounted board. It's an F4. It's got the newest firmware. It's got 100% brand new components, really smooth motors. I really don't foresee noise being an issue with this and it hasn't been on any of my other builds. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that from the get go. Make sure you hit save. Next, we can go to the receiver. However, I don't have that bound. So I'm going to have to do that right now. So I'm just going to disconnect because I'm going to use the board to power the receiver. So I've got my radio in bind mode. Plug in the board. Have the green light. Glide. Have the green light so we can disconnect that and exit from our radio bind. Now we should be able to plug back in and be good. Yep, I'm getting the data from my radio, so that's good. So we can go to receiver here. And you can see as I move these sticks, everything is looking good. So that was real nice. It was already set up. However, you can see it's drifting quite a bit. So I'm going to have to adjust this because my um, endpoints aren't exactly what it's expecting. So you just try and get it as still as possible. Um, depending on your gimbals, there's going to be more play in it or not. So that's pretty decent right there. And then I'm going to... I just like to add in 8 dead band on these just, just sort of because it's just something I do there as well as this right here, stick low threshold, is what used to be the min command. So that means right now, um, at 1050, that means between 1000 or whatever your radio bottom is, and 1050, this area right here is probably what it is, it does not affect anything. So you have to go up here, so there's basically just a lot of extra dead band at the bottom. So you look into your radio, you can see over my throttle here, it goes down to 1000 and 2000, just fine, the endpoints. Actually, I probably do have the endpoints set up right on here. Everything's looking really good. So I'm just going to set this to 1005. Now, you want to give yourself just a little bit of extra room, but I constantly know that my throttle is going to be centering in all the way down at the bottom, as well as the um, high I set to 2000. Just gives it a little bit more um, extra resolution. And other than that, we should be good in this tab. Then we can move over to modes. And all I do is add an arm switch on aux 1. So you have to set up a switch in your radio, which I chose this one. So you can see it just moves over this little bar. You want to have this range in something that it activates. And then you can also set up other modes in here. Um, but I don't use anything else, so we can just hit save there. Now we can go over to the motors tab. And here you want to plug in your battery, make sure your props are off. 
Just plug this guy in. Check this little box and we can use the master and then the arrow keys to move this up. As you can see the motor starts spinning. And I'm gonna go till they all are smooth, which is right there. I don't know if you can really see it, but they're all smoothing. Um, one below and I can hear them clicking um, because they're not being smooth and one more up right there at 1009. <clears throat> they're perfectly smooth and I find with newer ESCs 1009 is right where that is. So that's just fine. However, I have to reverse some of these motors. So I'm going to check the directions. So I want them to spin outwards. So this one's wrong. Uh, that one's right. Wrong. Right. So numbers two and three, because they go, if you look at the back of the quad, this is the back one, two, three, four. So we have two and three that are spinning the wrong way. So you could go into the ESC configurator and change those. However, since these are BL Heli 32, you need a specific one that's not available for Mac. So I'm going to have to swap the wires as well. So let me do that real quick. Okay, I just swapped the motor wires real quick. I just swapped two of them over. So again, let's plug in our battery and just verify they're going the correct direction right here. So I'll just spin these up to medium value. Wow, these ESCs and motors are really smooth, so that's spinning outwards. Just feel it on the side with your finger lightly. That's good. That's good, so they're all good there. So they spin up at 1009, the value. So if we go back to configuration, this percent value here um, for D shot, it'll give you an actual number if you're on multi shot. But the percent here I set as three, which means it'll be spinning the idle when you arm at 10, uh, 1030 right there. So that's 21 higher than the actual minimum idle is that of these motors. So that's perfectly fine if you set this to say five, that'll spin them at 10,050. But I tend to find that 2.5 or three works best for me. However, when you start getting into the twos, I found you can get into trouble with some motor stalls because it's just so low. If you do a hard maneuver or just something that causes it, you can cause the motor to stall and it'll sort of act like a desync and it'll almost fall out of the sky for a second there unless you recover. So I just find that three is a nice generic value to stick with. Then if we go into the OSD, obviously you can set this up as you like. I just go to switch all these off because I'm not going to use nearly all of them. So let me go through and put the ones I want on. above it and then depending on what camera have you you have you might have to move these up and down but that's just a pretty decent generic value there and then you can obviously you can turn the logo on or off as well as you go into the font manager and choose different types of text that you want but I think they're just fine as stock so I'm going to save that and yeah other than that everything should be pretty much good here so I'm just going to once again verify my battery voltage because it's going between 15.2 and 15.3 on the screen. So yeah, 15.28. So I think that scale is set up properly. So real quick, I'm just going to disconnect here. And I'm going to turn on my radio to, open TX. to verify things. So we have that. So it's connected up there. I'm actually going to uh, unplug from the computer so it's fully between the battery, the radio, everything's here. I'm going to arm, see how, oh, no arm. Oh, my throttle wasn't all the way down. So there we go, that's all good. I'm just gonna move it like that. So if it doesn't freak out, like totally freak out when you move it, or just give it a little tap, you should be perfectly fine. Once again, just verify your motor directions are correct, however you wanted to have them set up. That's fine. And then I'm going to raise the throttle a little bit. And then you can hear them spinning up um, right now, hopefully. And a lot of people are really worried about that, but that is perfectly normal. That's just, don't worry about that. It's perfectly normal. Um, it doesn't happen. Oops. <laughs> if you see my throttle over here, hopefully, um, in the lower end, because it's set up to only sort of become active with air mode above 1350. So if you're idling at a race, it won't matter. So as soon as I go up above that, then you can hear them start to rev up. And then if I just um, move the throttle a little bit, I can hear the correct motors spinning up. Everything sounds really nice and smooth. So I think we are done here. Oh, and one more thing I almost forgot. I'm gonna test the failsafe real quick. I'm just gonna set the throttle up, shut the transmitter off, and it goes to stop, just what you want.
Okay, so I'm going to unplug the battery and the USB. And there you have it. That was my quick Betaflight 3.2.3 setup tutorial. So hopefully you found this helpful in getting your quad set up. Let me know if you have any questions down below. There will be links to all these parts as well as I did a specific build video for this entire quad. As well as I will be doing a new PID tuning tutorial um, using this quad and the settings that I just showed you coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.